Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, Curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, as part of our nuclear fortnight, uh, where we spent two weeks talking about uh, the use of atomic weapons on the 75th anniversary of the only war in which nuclear weapons were used, coming to an end, uh, we will be talking about the bombing of Nagasaki. Now, hopefully you've tuned into the video on Hiroshima and some of our other nuclear Fortnite videos, which are in the description below. Um, the raid on Nagasaki was planned for uh, a little bit after the raid on Hiroshima, which would happen on August 6th, 1945. Uh, initially, it was thought that uh, the assembling of the second bomb, this one called Fat Man, as opposed to Little Boy, the uranium bomb dropped on Hiroshima, uh, Fat Man is a plutonium core bomb, that uh, the assembly of that was supposed to take uh, the better part of a week. However, Colonel Tibbetts, commanding the squadron, uh, with the nuclear weapons, was given full authority, if Japan had not surrendered after the dropping of the first bomb, to uh, use the second bomb on his own authority. He already had the list of approved cities, uh, and he had the force to build the bomb, or perform final assembly. This was... Supposed to take a week, like I said, but bad weather was predicted over Japan at that time. Um, Hurricane Ida, as it turns out, was going to hit later in August. And so uh, he asked if the bomb could be rushed into production by August 9th. Uh, and his troops were able to do it. And so August 9th, 75 years ago yesterday, became the date that uh, the bomb was deployed. Now, initially, the first target was Kokora, which was a much better uh, target. The backup this time was Nagasaki. Both of these cities had been backups for Hiroshima, uh, however, weather over Hiroshima on the morning of August 6th had been nearly perfect. So, uh, Kokura, which was the first backup, was made the new target. Nagasaki, the second backup, was bumped up to first backup. Uh, and Japan just had no cities left uh, that could be used as a third backup. So... Uh, Weather planes went out over both aircraft ahead of time, reported favorable weather over both targets, so three B-29s set out on the mission. Only two were able to find each other at the rendezvous point. The lead plane this time was not uh, the Enola Gay. Enola Gay had been used as uh, one of the weather planes, this time, Boxcar was going to be the lead plane, uh, the plane armed with the bomb. Uh, Boxcar's normal pilot was uh, named Bach. And I should say the spelling is B-O-C-K-S-C-A-R, uh, as in the man, Boxcar, not as in the train, B-O-X-Car. Uh, so... Box car is not being flown by its normal pilot, Bach. It's being flown by uh, the squadron's executive officer, Major Sweeney. Uh, Sweeney's own aircraft, the Great Artiste, is uh, one of the other aircraft assigned to the mission with a different pilot. Uh, because only Enola Gay had its name painted on the nose, there 
was confusion after the raid as to which aircraft was flown. And a number of uh, media sources reported that uh, because Sweeney was the pilot, then the aircraft that dropped the second bomb must have been the great artiste. But uh, in reality, we now know that uh, he was flying box B-29 box car. Uh, so anyway, of the three aircraft, only two meet up over the rendezvous, and they head to Kokora. The weather report had said that Kokora was in good shape. However, a nearby city, Yahada, uh, had been bombed the night before, and there was a significant amount of smoke from that raid being blown over Kokora. And... Uh, in Yahada, when the bombing raid was going to happen, uh, they tended to burn a lot of tar and other things like that to make really thick black smoke to obscure the target. Uh, and again, this also obscured Kokora and ended up saving that city. Uh, Sweeney made three passes over Kokora to try and line up a bomb site, but was unable to. And by that point, he had loitered over the city for so long that uh, heavy anti-aircraft fire was being received. And he was uh, starting to pick up Japanese fighter communications on their radio frequency, which might have indicated that uh, combat air patrol had been launched to intercept him. Now, well, this is interesting because uh, typically by this point in the war, the Japanese were not intercepting uh, small numbers of B-29s. Perhaps following the uh, raid on Hiroshima, in which only three aircraft were involved, the Japanese were uh, now starting to, to fear the use of more weapons like that. Uh, it, it's unclear because even though Kokura may have uh, activated its defenses, as we'll see in a minute. Nagasaki does not activate theirs when they see just a pair of B-29s flying over on what looks like a scouting mission. Now, uh, Sweeney is running low on fuel. One of the fuel pumps uh, has failed prior to the mission starting, and rather than delaying the mission, they just decided that uh, they didn't need 650 gallons of fuel for this flight. The B-29s had an absolutely monstrous range for propeller-driven aircraft during World War II. Uh, and so they just decided they didn't need it. Um, he had burned more fuel waiting an extra half hour for his third aircraft to arrive at the rendezvous point. And then he had burned still more fuel, making three unsuccessful bomb runs over Kokora. Uh, but the B-29 has massive reserves of fuel, and the United States had taken enough island bases and airfields close enough to Japan that uh, even running low on fuel he and not able to make it back to the uh, Marianas, he could still make it back to Iwo Jima or Okinawa which had recently been secured. Uh, so he decided at that point to divert to uh, Nagasaki. Uh, over in Nagasaki, uh, he found cloud cover that made it difficult to line up on the target. Uh, and Nagasaki had more or less been spared by bomb raids up until this point because of its geography. It had a number of key uh, industrial centers. However, it sat in a series of valleys with high uh, mountains overhead. So it was very hard for aircraft with poor visibility to home in via radar detection because they pick up the mountains, they don't pick up the city in the valley. Uh, and it meant it wasn't great conditions for uh, creating those firestorms that American bombers like to create. Uh, so the city had been raided a couple of times, but nothing significant like the raids that had destroyed so many other Japanese cities. Um, 
And that's also why it was so low on the list of priorities for the atomic bombs, because it wasn't a big flat open space where the explosion could uh, move out. It was going to be contained within the, uh, the mountains that formed the valley that the city was in. Anyway, he was out of time, so Sweeney lined up for a bomb run, uh, got as close as he could, ended up being about two miles off the target, and was extremely uh, late. It was about 11 o'clock in the morning by the time he made his bomb run. Uh, but he dropped his bomb, and the, the bomb, which had 11 pounds of plutonium, uh, worked to perfection and set off a 21 kiloton explosion, uh, which could be seen for well over a hundred miles around. Uh, an estimated one third of the city's population, uh, made perhaps as high as 80,000 people, were killed by the bomb or by effects of the bomb within the next uh, couple of months. So the second bombing was successful and the United States had proven that they had multiple atomic bombs in their inventory. Uh, this proof would be a major contributing factor to Japan finally surrendering uh, some six days later after significant cabinet level discussion, which the emperor himself had to step into to make a final decision. Meanwhile, with low fuel, Sweeney had to divert to Okinawa, which had only recently been uh, fully secured. And uh, as he came in for a landing, he tried to radio that he was in distress. Uh, he fired off all of the flares on the aircraft to show that he was in distress, but uh, was unable to get any sort of response from the airfield at Okinawa. Uh, so with, with no fuel, he went in anyway and uh, two of his engines shut down because they were fuel starved on the landing approach. Um, so again, B-29, a great robust aircraft with four engines, uh, tremendous range, uh, tremendous capacity, and uh, the ability to fly as it turns out on just two engines. Uh, in fact, he was landing uh, too fast because of his approach, he couldn't make a, a full landing approach. He was going about 20 miles per hour too quick uh, and had to make a real uh, dicey landing, which involved a 90 degree turn with both pilots having their feet on the brakes when he ran out of uh, runway. But Sweeney was able to pull off the landing and save the aircraft. Good thing too, because it was borrowed. Uh, not sure what box insurance plan was on it. At this point, President Truman decided that uh, there were no more really viable targets for the atomic bomb. So uh, the decision was made that uh, Colonel Tibbets could no longer choose to use the bombs as they were delivered to him, uh, but rather they were going to hold the bombs for tactical usage during Operation Downfall. Having dropped two of the bombs and Japan not surrendering, uh, the United States began to move forward with its plans to invade Japan. Uh, at approximately the same time, the Soviet Union started invading Japanese territory, uh, and so it became a rush to get troops on Japan before the Soviet Union could. Uh, and saving atomic bombs for tactical uses was uh, decided to be a key part of that invasion. The United States at this point was producing approximately three of the plutonium fat man type bombs per month. Uh, and one of the uranium little boy type bombs uh, potentially every three months or so, they could get enough uranium to throw a bomb together for that. Uh, and so the plan was to start stacking these up to save, to destroy uh, huge Japanese troop formations or whatnot on a tactical level during the invasion. 
Uh, as it turns out, Japan finally announced they were going to surrender on August 15th, and no further bombs had to be used. Approximately 200 uh, Japanese civilians are recognized as being double bomb survivors. Uh, so approximately 200 people had been in Hiroshima when that bomb was dropped on the 6th and uh, either traveled back home to Nagasaki because they were there on business or uh, were evacuated to Nagasaki because it was one of the few cities that hadn't been uh, severely destroyed. Uh, so 200 people are recognized as having survived both bomb blasts with uh, as many as nine being believed to have been in the blast zone of each bomb. So, what is the legacy of uh, the atomic bombings? Again, they were so devastating that uh, they would never be used in combat again, although many nations have them in their arsenal, none have used them since the United States did in 1945. So uh, while this is a remembrance of all the lives lost 75 years ago, uh, we should also celebrate the fact that mankind has gone 75 years without using nuclear weapons against each other. Uh, and that's a good thing because within four years of the U.S. dropping the bomb in September of 1949, the Soviet Union got the bomb, uh, which led the United States to unveil the hydrogen bomb, a weapon 1,000 times more powerful than either the Hiroshima or Nagasaki bombs. Many people have argued that the United States using the bombs was not so much to get Japan to surrender, as it was to demonstrate to the Soviet Union as uh, some sort of early Cold War gesture that uh, the United States had this new and terrible capacity which could uh, defeat the manpower advantage that the Soviet Union could marshal. Uh, in practice, if this was the intention, it failed because of the Soviet Union's ability to spy on the West. Uh, they were already well aware we had the capacity, so actually using the bomb against Japan uh, wasn't anything significant. I tend to fall into the camp that uh, the use of the atomic bombs saved lives in the long run. Those cities were going to be destroyed in firestorms one way or another. Uh, and Japan likely wouldn't have surrendered because of the conventional bombings. And so an invasion of uh, Japan would have taken place, which would have led to uh, even more Japanese civilian and military casualties and, of course, American military casualties. My own grandfather was uh, on his way to... Uh, the Philippines to uh, take over a unit as part of Operation Downfall uh, when the war ended. So I'm kind of biased in that I may not be here were the war not to end at that time. Uh, but I do believe that the use of the atomic bombs helped speed the end of World War II. Uh, and that it led to fewer casualties in the long run. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new content like this. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, do you think the U.S. was justified in dropping the bomb? Why do you think they made that decision? Uh, drop them in the comment section down below. Let's start a conversation down there. Check the description below for links to more of our videos and ways you can support the museum and our YouTube channel.